in the last class uh, we looked at the PMOS transistor, uh, we recognized how it comes about, uh, we saw it is uh, the equations that uh, 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 govern it and recognized that this is basically uh, a device which pretty much behaves like an NMOS device except that its characteristics are complementary to the NMOS transistor and we also saw how uh, you know whatever you can do with an NMOS device you can also do with a PMOS device. In fact, if the uh, mu n c I mean if the mu n c ox w by l of the NMOS transistor and the PMOS and mu p c ox w by l for the PMOS transistor are the same and the threshold voltages are the same then you can just take an NMOS circuit and convert it into a PMOS circuit it will have exactly the same behavior small signal uh, model uh, properties uh, gain input impedance output impedance etc right but uh, then the obvious question was uh, you know uh, why do we need the PMOS if all you can do with the PMOS you can also do with the NMOS and vice versa the question is why do you need uh, a PMOS transistor in the first place and the answer to that is that the uh, the uh, the behavior of the transistor is 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 complementary so you can put nmos and pmos transistors together to do things that you could not have done with with a single type of transistor alone right or you know maybe you could even uh, uh, try to do it with single transistor uh, single type of transistor but uh, you would have to jump through you know uh, a lot of hoops right it is like having uh, it is like saying well my right hand looks like the left hand right uh, why do I need both correct is not it is that, I mean the, re the reason is that you know whatever you can do with the right hand you can do that yeah uh, uh, but uh, 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 but you get the idea right but it is with, when you have both hands that you get I mean it is they behave complementarily so you can do things with uh, you know both hands which you could not have done with with just one all right okay. So, uh, uh, so today we will uh, you know uh, 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 try to see a simple example of, 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 of uh, a family of circuits which basically you know it's, I would say it is more of a fun class. Uh, uh, we will try to build circuits from uh, scratch basically uh, uh, trying to do something that uh, we might want in practice. So, uh, as we have discussed uh, the, the performance of a, of, a, uh, of a circuit basically depends on uh, 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 on the transconductance of a transistor and uh, the transconductance is basically mu n c ox w by l times some v g s minus v t or some square root of 2 k i whatever you like to uh, uh, you know whatever uh, uh, way you like to look at it. Uh, but the bottom line is that if you bias a transistor with a constant current and that is what we have done so far right the, uh, the current is constant and that is been established by the use of of negative feedback right in uh, one way or the other if the current is constant the transconductance of the transistor will vary with temperature uh, due to a change in the mobility right and uh, uh, you know uh, 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 this variation over say 120 degree centigrade uh, can be you know as large as maybe about plus minus maybe 25 percent or so over a I mean it is uh, for all I mean it might seem like a small change it is only 25 percent variation of the transconductance over over 125 degree centigrade. But uh, uh, you know commercial parts are basically designed so that they work well over this large range because you know if you go to Ladakh you do not want to go and you know buy another phone which only works uh, you know at, at, uh, at uh, 0 degree C and if you go to sub Saharan Africa you want to make sure that the same phone still still works there right. Now, uh, it turns out that uh, uh, you know um, uh, when we uh, go forward with uh, uh, models for the transistor as far as I mean dynamic models for the transistor where uh, we are worried about parasitic capacitances and time constants with which these capacitances charge. It turns out that the speed of the transistor is uh, dependent uh, on not only on the GM but also the parasitic uh, uh, capacitances that you see or any intentional capacitance that you might put uh, you know uh, uh, to make the circuit work right. So, uh, the GM has got uh, uh, dimensions of uh, 1 over resistance, the capacitance of course is dimensions of capacitance. So, all time constants will, will be of the form 
uh, you know 1 by rc which is the same as gm over some c gm is the uh, gm of the transconductor of the transistor of some transistor in your network and c is some capacitance in your network okay now uh, so the uh, the bandwidth of a circuit is typically defined by a time constant of the form gm over c or free uh, gm over c now if gm i mean c largely remains constant because it is uh, with temperature because it is largely a geometry dependent dependent parameter right some w l you know by area by distance and so on right on the other hand a transistor is a much more complicated device so it, uh, the, uh, the way it varies varies with temperature is a lot more complicated as you can imagine right and therefore you know if gm varies over you know 100 degrees uh, by about 25 percent right what comment can we make about the bandwidth of uh, of uh, an amplifier the bandwidth depends on is, is some gm by some c c remains largely fixed with temperature gm varies by 25 percent over temperature and therefore bandwidth will change over uh, temperature all right now if you want uh, the uh, if you want to have a minimum bandwidth for your amplifier right uh, and you want to bias your transistor with a constant current which is what we have done so far right uh, how do you think we can make an amplifier whose bandwidth is guaranteed to be greater than a certain minimum over all uh, operating temperatures do you understand the problem so let us say you are uh, uh, you know you uh, you want a bandwidth of at least I do not know 100 megahertz okay which is some gm over some c right okay and uh, uh, the uh, you are trying to bias your transistor with a constant current so that uh, gm is some you know is a temperature dependent quantity hmm? and by the way as temperature increases do you think the transconductance will increase or decrease increases or decreases with temperature i mean as things get hotter you know uh, basically uh, the, the the physical reason is that uh, the atoms in the lattice are jumping around a lot more right and uh, carriers are going to get trying to get through from from source to drain so if in the middle you know people are uh, you know if the lattice atoms are jumping around then obviously there's a lot more collisions and it takes uh, you know uh, effective mobility of the uh, carriers is reduced and therefore as temperature increases you should expect uh, you should expect that the uh, transconduct mobility will decrease and so will the gm okay it's not increase you understand all right okay so now uh, coming back to our situation uh, so let us say we bias the transistor with a constant current and we want to guarantee a minimum bandwidth of say just for argument's sake some 100 megahertz right uh, what do you think we should design for so basically we say okay well we know that the gm is going to be the lowest at the highest operating temperature so i will design my amplifier to be to have the minimum required bandwidth at the highest temperature okay and uh, so by design at lower temperature it will be guaranteed to have a bandwidth greater than the minimum required right okay but uh, so what is the problem with this approach so you are uh, so you are designed for the worst case right okay but that basically means under the at the nominal temperature right which is where you are most most of the time you are likely to operate if you design for the worst case then you are wasting power simply because you know you have a bandwidth which is much larger than necessary okay and uh, you could have in fact if, if you had designed it only for the uh, 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 for the required bandwidth at at room temperature you could have burnt a lot less lot less current which basically translates to a longer battery life does it make sense okay all right i mean uh, 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 to uh, uh, to drive home the point i mean well a uh, lot of our energy is uh, nuclear energy right and we have a uh, we have a plant uh, you know uh, not very far away right so i mean you know uh, at any time anything can happen right so one way to uh, de risk yourself is say well you know there could be a nuclear explosion any time so let me uh, you know cover myself with you know 3 inches of lead and walk around right okay well i mean you know uh, it is true that it could happen but i mean that is it seems like such a rare occurrence that it doesn't seem to make any sense to design for the for the for the worst case 
right and then you will say I will leave underground so that you know nothing will happen okay somebody may bomb me right uh, so let me uh, sit underground. Hmm? So this guy I mean so this kind of designing for the absolute worst case basically means that you will be you know of course uh, you know even under the nominal case nobody can bomb you at that time right but uh, the point is that you are so terribly uh, uh, inefficient under the under normal circumstances. So, what is a smart thing to do? So, yeah, so basically you want to uh, 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 the problem is that the transconductance is changing with temperature right uh, because we are biasing it with a constant current right. So, if we could if we know that we are operating at room temperature you could if you had somehow a way of figuring out uh, 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 you know what the temperature is for argument's sake. Then you, uh, if I know that I am operating at room temperature I could go and reduce my bias current. So, that basically if you want a minimum bandwidth I want to make sure that the transconductance is is uh, uh, is at least this much right. And this means that if I somehow are able to figure out what current to bias the transistor at so that the transconductance will remain constant with temperature correct. Then under all temperatures I am never over designed. So, you know at low temperature when the room is cold then you know I have lesser current flowing in the transistor and therefore, uh, uh, because the mobility is high the transconductance will be what I want. If uh, the temperature is very high well uh, 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 you know we should increase the current so that we compensate for the fall in mobility. So, that under all circumstances at all temperatures we should always we will always have a, a constant g m. So, in other words we rather than bias with a constant current we would like to bias it with such a current so that the transconductance of the transistor is constant right. And this is commonly used in a lot of uh, a lot of circuits right uh, for this uh, for this very reason all right. So, such circuits are called fixed GM bias circuits and you know are an example of how one can use NMOS and PMOS transistors together to do things which were kind of difficult to do with only a single transistor all right. So, the statement of the problem is uh, here is a here is a transistor right and the transistor is operating in saturation right. What current must I bias or must we bias the transistor at so that g m is a constant which is a let us call this sum 1 by r. And uh, remember uh, uh, in principle what will we do? What is transconductance ok? Uh, so, g m remember is nothing but there are many multiple ways of, of doing this mu n c ox w by l v g s minus v t 2 i d by v g s minus v t and square root of blah 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 right. So, uh, so if you are given a transistor in the lab and if you would like to find its transconductance right when you bias it at a certain current ok, uh, which, which one is, is most convenient? You are given a transistor very good why? Very good. So, this basically this gives you an easy way of measuring we know we can measure I d through ammeter v g s minus v t can also be formed and uh, dividing one by the other we can get the transconductance correct all right. So, uh, and uh, so if you are in a lab and you wanted to make sure that you want uh, uh, to find the transconductance of a transistor I mean what is the process we will find the transconductance of the transistor it is either less than what we want equal to what we want or higher than what we want. If it is lesser than what we want what will we do? What does it mean? 
I mean, remember the transconductor, you know, this is what our transconductance, correct? Okay. All right. So, if we find that we measure the transconductance, if we find that the transconductance is too small, what does it mean? Vgs minus Vt is, if Gm is greater than 1 by R, what does it mean? You have a transistor guys, there is some current flowing through it, right? It is much easier to think about it in terms of current rather than, uh, you know, uh, I and Vgs minus Vt, right? So, if the transconductance is smaller than what you want, what does it mean for the bias current flowing through the transistor? Is it, it is smaller than what uh, uh, should be there. So, what will you do? Increase current flowing through the transistor. Do you understand this? Okay. So, we measure the, the, the uh, this is common sense, there is nothing uh, uh, rocket sciencey about it, right. We have some transconductance of the tra uh, transistor, right. It is smaller than what we want. How will we increase the transconductance? We increase the current flowing through the transistor. On the other hand, if the transconductance is too much, we decrease the current. So, this is what kind of a system is this? This is negative feedback all over again, right, okay. All right. So, now the question is, okay, so uh, if you are in the lab and you want to measure uh, Vgs minus Vt, what will you do? You, you, you want to bias the transistor with a current ID, a current ID must flow in the transistor, right. Our first job is to find what the transconductance is. Then we compare it with 1 by R and then go and change the current in the right direction. Do you understand? Okay. So, the question is, how do we find? Yeah, you are in the lab, how would we find uh, Gm? What do you suggest? A current ID must flow through the drain and we would like to measure Vgs minus Vt. So, what experiment will you suggest? Okay, please tell me exactly what I need to do. Here is the transistor. All right. What do I do with it? We need to we need to, uh, I mean, we have, we want to make sure that the current flowing through the transistor is some ID, correct? And we want to calculate the GM when a current ID is flowing through the transistor and the transistor is operating in saturation. What do you think we can do? So, the suggestion is, well, you take the transistor, you short the gate in the drain, okay, then what? Okay, very good. So, you put ID, okay. correct. So, what will what will be the voltage there? That will be VGS, right. But what we want? So, basically GM, remember, we want to compare 2 ID over VGS minus VT, which is the GM. We want to compare it with with 1 by R, right, which is equivalent to comparing. Remember, the easiest things to compare are either voltage or current because you can use KCL and KVL, okay. Okay. So, basically one way of doing this is to basically say I can, which is equivalent to comparing Vgs minus Vt over 2R, right. So, if Id is greater than Vgs minus Vt by 2R, what does it mean? Does, me, does it mean transconductance is too little or too much? Means Gm is greater than 1 over R, which is equivalent to saying Id is too much or too little. What must I do? Reduce it. Correct. So, what do we do? What we need, therefore, is to compare this current ID with VGS minus VT by 2. All right. Okay. So, uh, uh, let us call this, uh, yeah, okay, VGS minus VT by 2. Now, given a voltage Vgs, we are trying to generate a, 
a current which is Vgs minus Vt by 2R. So, what kind of control source is this? Given a voltage, you are generating a current. So, voltage controlled current source. What is the simplest voltage controlled current source you know with a transistor? Voltage controlled current source. We want to generate Vgs minus Vt by 2R. How will you generate it? Okay. All right. So, basically the voltage controlled current source that you know is is something like this. Does it make sense? Okay. If let us call this Vgs 1, let us call this M 1 and let us call this M 2. So, what is that voltage there? If this is M 2 and let us call this I am talking about the absolute current not the incremental current. So, this is Vgs 2. What is the current flowing in this transistor? Assume that the drain is connected to a sufficiently large potential so that it is M 2 is operating in saturation. So, this is M 1, this is M 2. So, the gate voltage is at Vgs 1. This is nothing but Vgs 1 minus Vgs 2 by Is this clear people? All right. I mean this is so far we have just basically you know we are playing around with all blocks that we know so far. Nothing is new. Okay. But what do we want? What are we looking for to generate? Yeah. Okay. Vgs 1 minus Vt by 2 R, but what we have is Vgs minus Vgs 1 minus Vgs 2 by 2 R. Okay. So, how will we solve this problem? I mean, so, ideally therefore, our problem would be solved if Vgs 2 was equal to is equal to Vt. Okay. So, any suggestions on what I can, how, how can I make Vgs 2 equal to Vt? If you have a transistor and you want its Vgs to be equal to Vt, what can we do? What is the formula for the Vgs of a transistor in terms of the current flowing? Vt plus square root of over Okay. So, now stare at that expression and tell me what we can do to make Vgs equal to Vt. I mean Id equal to 0 basically you know does not help because we want some current right to be flowing. What else can we do? You cannot change 2, you cannot change the square root. You so, if you ch if you choose W by L tending to infinity, Right. In other words, you choose a huge device, right, which is equivalent to saying current must go to zero. Correct? Okay. But uh, uh, yeah, you either for a fixed for a small transistor, current must go to zero, or for a infinitely large transistor, you have some finite current flowing. Correct? So, in other words, if the uh, if the size of M2 is chosen to be infinity. So, this is W by L. If the size of the transistor is chosen to be infinite, what will be the current flowing? Vgs 1 minus Vt by 2. All right. Okay. So, now in principle, what must we do? Okay. So, I mean, in principle, therefore, uh, we uh, this is Vdd. Let us say we can put an ammeter here. let us say this reads I 2, right. So, if I d is greater than I 2, what does it mean? It means that G m is larger than 1 by r, what must we do? I, I we should reduce I d and vice versa. So, in other words, if I d is greater than I 2 must reduce I d and if I d is less than I 2, you must increase I d. Does it make sense people? All right. So, how will we uh, compare two currents K C L? So, uh, okay, so any suggestions? This is I 2. I must compare 
I must compare it with I D. All right. So, what do you think we could do? Okay. Let us say you had a another current source I D. What will you do? Let us say you had a copy of this I D. What will you do? So, basically you say okay, well, if I had another copy of I D, what I would do would be to connect I D to that to I 2, correct? And what will be the potential of uh, node x? So, if I d is greater than I 2, what comment can you make about uh, uh, potential of node x? If that means basically means that if V x increases, what does it mean? If V x is going up, it means that means I d too much, right? And therefore, I d must be reduced. All right. And uh, if V x is going down, all right. Okay. Now uh, we have a current. Uh, we need. We need. So therefore, we basically need two variable current sources I d because we are going to vary I d, correct? So, you need two identical current sources which are electronically controlled. So, any suggestions on what you can have for two, we need two current sources which push current down and must be variable. So, what do you think we can do? So, this is nothing but That is V D. Correct? Let us call that V by that is our that is our control voltage. Correct? So, if V y goes, so this is remember this is I D, this is an identical copy I D. All right. So, if uh, if V y goes up. What happens to ID? ID decreases because the VSG of the transistor is reducing. What should we do? If VX goes up, ID must be must go down. Okay. If ID must go down, what should we do to VY? Yes. What should we do? Connect nodes. Remember that if V x goes up, it means that I d is too much and I d must be reduced. How do you reduce I d? You must increase V y. So, basically you can uh, what we need to do therefore, is to short x and y all right. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah, how do we know this works? Well, if you are looking at this circuit for the very first time, all right, I mean there is no uh, nothing uh, to get worried about. Well, we know that the current in the two PMOS transistors M3 and M4 are exactly the same. So, uh, let us call that current ID. The same ID is flowing through m1 and m2. So, Vgs1 must be equal to let us call this Vt plus some gate overdrive. All right. So, what is the, uh, the, uh, the, the voltage there? The gate Vgs1 is Vt plus delta V. What is the voltage across 2R? Okay. The two ways in which you can write it. One is Id times 2R, what is the other way you can write it as? The voltage across 2R is nothing but Vgs1 minus ah, which is what is Vgs2? Vt. So, the voltage across 2R is delta V. 
right. So, delta V by 2R must be equal to ID which is equivalent to saying which means what 2 ID by delta V equals 1 by R which is equal to saying that GM equals 1 by Okay. All right, but it is one thing to basically, you know. I mean, we we could have finished this in five minutes by by simply showing you the circuit and saying, look, it works, and then move on, right? But now we actually know how this circuit came about in the first place, right? So, what is the only problem with this circuit, which is impractical? W by L equal to infinity. Right. So, basically instead of making it uh, uh, you know infinity, let us say I will call this n square times w over l. Okay. So, what must you do to this? Let us say I mean when, when earlier when this was infinite, this voltage was delta v and this was 2R and the current was ID, right. Now, let us say we want to change this transistor size to something finite, all right, but we want to maintain the same current, all right. See, as long as this current remains, I mean, as long as this voltage remains the same and this current remains the same, you do not care what you have inside that box, correct. So, if you put VGS 1, I must get VGS 1 minus VT by 2R, that is the, that is what I want. Internally, you could have an elephant, it does not matter, correct, okay. So, uh, uh, rather than make it uh, infinite, let us say we make it finite, all right. What comment can we make about uh, uh, this R here? In other words, what should Rx be? So, that I d is nothing but delta v by 2 r, right. So, this v g s 1 is what v t plus delta v, okay. The same current I d is flowing through m 2. So, what will its overdrive be? The transistor is n square times larger. If you have the same current in a transistor which is n square times larger, what comment can we make about the, the overdrive? 1 by n times delta v. Does it make sense? Pawan Kumar, okay. So, what will be the voltage drop across Rx then? Vgs1 is Vt plus delta v, Vgs2 is Vt plus delta V by n, what is the voltage across R, Rx, this is delta V time uh, into 1 minus 1 by n and so what will be the current uh, uh, by Rx must be equal to, we want delta V by 2R, correct. So, what should you do? So, Rx must be chosen to be 2 r times 1 minus 1 by n, okay. Now, can you make a simple choice of, you can choose anything for n, what is a good choice you think? n equal to 2 will make this simply r x equal to r. So, and this will become, what will be the size of m 2? 4 w by n, alright and this becomes r, okay. So, this is an example of a practical circuit that. So, what is the, uh, so remember that this has got, so G m equals 1 over r regardless of
this is w by l, this is 4 w by l and these are w by l of this p mos and w by l of the p mos. All right. And this is and the current in both arms will be exactly the same and will be always such that a GM of which transistor? Which transistor's GM are we stabilizing, folks? M1, right? So the GM of M1, which is 2ID over this is Vt plus delta V, 2ID over delta V is a con is equal to 1 over. Does it make sense? Okay. And this does not depend on, it does not depend on temperature, it does not you know, depend on supply, right. As long as all the transistors are in saturation, right, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the current will automatically stabilize in such a way that the gm of m1 is is 1 by r okay so but now if r changes with temperature then you have this uh, you know a similar problem so what people do is uh, you know uh, uh, it turns out that in many processes you have what are called zero temperature coefficient resistors alternatively uh, people make this external to the put in, put a pin so that that the resistor can be external right and uh, therefore uh, uh, and it's uh, very easy to get uh, you know uh, uh, zero temperature coefficient uh, you know uh, resistors uh, you know as discrete components you put that there and uh, even if the temperature or operating temperature of the of the chip changes right because this resistor is constant you will find that you will find that the, the current always adjusts itself so that the transconductance of the of the transistor is 1 by r okay and now if you want to bias other transistors what will you do if you want i mean this goes and ensures that m1's transconductance is 1 by r but uh, i have an amplifier where uh, it needs to be biased too so what do I, what will i do yeah, basically, uh, you know, you can uh, 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 you can make as many copies of this ID that you want. How will you do that? Current, right? So you can mirror this current, you know, how many ever times you want, okay, and make it. You use it for a whole bunch of circuits, right? So that the GM of all the transistors remains constant with temperature. Okay. Now you know how the circuit comes about. All right. Now, now, if you did not know how the circuit comes about and you are looking at this for the first time, if you looked at that circuit, correct, and if you did the, I mean, well, the same equations hold. Right, the, the top is a mirror, so the same current flows in both legs, right? So this, uh, so the same current flows in both M1 and M2, and therefore, again, the voltage V. I mean, you know, uh, uh, between the gate of M2, uh, if this, if this overdrive is, if this is v, Vt plus delta V, this voltage will be delta V over two. Correct, because the same current flows in M1 and M2, M2 is 4 times larger and therefore delta V by 2R equal to I, which then seems to indicate that GM of M1 is still equal to 1 by R. So, it seems like it does not matter whether 
whether uh, you know the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, whether you use the circuit on the left or the circuit on the right just from the point of when if you write equations, but it turns out that if you analyze this carefully you will find that this is this is positive feedback and you will uh, this uh, this works on the principle of if the transconductance is less than 1 over r you reduce the current ok. If you go and analyze this carefully that is what you will find and the, even though the circuit looks deceptively similar to the circuit on the left this circuit will not work in practice ok. So, that is why it always makes sense to understand why a circuit works and how it comes about in the first place rather than simply open the textbook and mug up a circuit and then uh, start using it. You understand? All right. Okay. All right. With that, I'll stop. We'll continue.